Assalamualaikum. My name is Dr. Mansoor Ahmed. Part B video clip of this blood pressure practical. So we have finished this uh, last video clip with we have come to mean arterial pressure, and now we we will discuss the mean arterial pressure, and we have discussed the pulse pressure, we have discussed the uh, we have discussed the systolic blood pressure, we have discussed the diastolic blood pressure. We have discussed the pulse pressure and we, have, we are discussing the mean arterial pressure. Uh, it is defined as the average effective pressure forcing blood through the circulatory system. Now the average effective pressure and it is the average pressure and you should understand it like this thing that average of pressure which is effective and so average pressure throughout the arterial system this is the average pressure and this is the effective pressure also. Average pressure, number one, and effective, it is effective that it forces the blood in the further direction in the arterial, throughout the arterial system. Forcing blood through, and this effective pressure forces blood through the circulatory system. So it is diastolic pressure. Uh, what is the formula of this mean arterial pressure? That it is diastolic pressure plus one third of pulse pressure. So, see here formula mean arterial pressure is equal to diastolic pressure plus 1 by 3 or one third pulse pressure. One third pulse pressure and this is the formula of the mean arterial pressure and this is very important you should know the formula of the mean arterial pressure. And now the we uh, want to know the ideal value of this mean arterial pressure and normally mean arterial pressure is 93 millimeter of mercury and it uh, ranges between the normal range is bit of for mean arterial pressure is between 90 to 100 millimeter of mercury but ideal value is 93 millimeter of mercury which is perfectly normal and this is the normal range from 90 to 100 millimeter of mercury and this is the normal range. Variations in blood pressure. Now we will discuss the variations, physiological as well as pathological. Pathological means that the pathology is the abnormality within the physiological functioning, and physiology is the normal functioning of the body. So when we will be discussing these uh, variations, then uh, we know that we have two uh, terms, and these are the physiological and the pathological. So physiological variation, age, you know, age uh, has effect on the blood pressure and with age blood pressure rises. Gender, women have low as compared to men of same age. So the woman, blood pressure of the woman has, is low as compared to the men of same age. Of, however, after 45 years of age, women's blood pressure increases more rapidly than men. You know, uh, after nearly menopause, after menopause of the woman, the blood pressure of the woman increases more rapidly than men. Now, body build more in obese persons than lean. The blood pressure is more in obese persons. Obese means fatty person than lean. Lean means thin person. After meals increases for few hours after meals due to increase in cardiac output. You know that after meals the cardiac output increase and energy is generated within the heart and the heart contracts much more powerfully and then the uh, also the water is delivered uh, added to the and food is uh, added and so after meals the blood pressure rises due to increase in cardiac output. During sleep, now during sleep uh, it is reduced to 15 to 20 millimeter of mercury during sleep. It is reduced about 15 to 20 millimeter of mercury during sleep. Emotional conditions. During excitement or anxiety, the blood pressure is increased due to release of adrenaline. Now you should know that during excitement or anxiety, the blood pressure is increased due to release of adrenaline. As adrenaline is increased, and because as we are excited or we have anxiety, adrenaline is increased and this uh, adrenaline increases the blood pressure. After exercise increases, these are all the physiological conditions. After exercise increases after exercise due to increase in force of contraction of heart and stroke volume. So uh, after exercise, the stroke volume is increased, the contraction of the heart is increased and more output volume is increased and that is the stroke volume. And so these are all the physiological variations 
of the uh, of this blood pressure and now the pathological variations we have two hypertension if we have hypertension and we have hypotension no primary and secondary hypertension and primary hypertension doesn't have any cause and secondary hypertension have causes so high and the second one is hypertension effects of posture and exercise on blood pressure now we should know the effects of posture and exercise on blood pressure marrying the effects of postural changes first measure the blood pressure of person in lying supine position and then in sitting and standing positions we will measure the blood pressure in lying supine position and then we will measure in uh, the uh, blood pressure of the subject or patient in sitting and standing positions record the results and compare the changes with various postures and when after recording the result we will compare the changes within various postures measuring the effects of exercise to assess the effects of exercise on blood pressure it is recorded when the subject is at rest and then the subject is asked to do standard exercise the result is recorded and compared with that at rest now after performing exercise we will compare the result with the when the person was at rest what is standard exercise you should know the standard exercise it is any kind of exercise producing a sense of fatigue in subject when the muscles are fatigued then or as the subject is fatigued then this is known as the uh, standard exercise and it is running for about 200 steps maximum on treadmill or any other uh, ground or anything and we have treadmills so measuring the blood pressure we have direct I, as i have or earlier i have told you that there are the direct method and there is the indirect method and indirect method is divided into two methods palpatory method in this method the radial parcel felt we will uh, apply the cuff but we will not use the uh, stethoscope we will not use the stethoscope in the palpatory uh, method and in this method the radial pulse is felt and the cuff is filled with air and then we uh, after for the fall in the blood pressure we measure in the uh, mercury or uh, aneroid manometer and then we know that uh, it measures only the systolic blood pressure while in this method the radial pulse is felt by making changes first increasing and decreasing in the cuff and simultaneously recording the pressures on a sphygmo manometer mercury column so the it is measured on the sphygmo manometer mercury column we measure it the disadvantage of palpatory method is that the diastolic pressure cannot be measured in this uh, palpatory method the diastolic pressure blood pressure of the subject cannot be measured and you should know this thing very that this is uh, palpatory main palpatory method we apply the cuff we uh, do, do not use stethoscope we uh, fill the cuff with air uh, and then we Uh, allow it to fall after opening the valve of the air and then the mercury column falls and the air is decreased in the cuff and when the systolic blood pressure uh, comes the pulse will be felt again and so uh, in this way the pulse is felt and that is the systolic blood pressure now auscultatory method this is the most accurate method to determine arterial pressure blood pressure usually by clinician so this is the most accurate method auscultatory method this is the most accurate method to determine arterial blood pressure usually by used clinic by clinicians requirements you should know the requirements of the auscultatory method stethoscope you know palpatory method doesn't have, we don't use stethoscope in palpatory method but we use stethoscope in auscultatory method ergometer exercise cycle or treadmill this is the exercise cycle present uh, to for exercise to record blood pressure after exercise or treadmill is present to record uh, 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 blood pressure after exercise sphygmo manometer with mercury manometer and aneroid meter so this is the sphygmo manometer with mercury manometer or aneroid meter you know this is the these are the requirements and procedure we will discuss it in our next video clip thanks for watching